Welcome! In this video, we introduce the topic of facilitating a sprint review. Per the Scrum Guide, the purpose of the sprint review is to inspect the outcome of the sprint and determine future adaptations. The event is intended to be a collaborative working session, but sometimes it runs the risk of being more like a one-way conversation where the main focus seems to be more on the team giving a demo or listing off things done during the sprint instead of really inspecting the outcome and identifying future opportunities and adaptations. So how can we improve that? And how can facilitation help for more effective sprint reviews? In this video, we share one of many facilitation techniques that can help turn a sprint review into a more engaging and collaborative session in which valuable feedback can be gathered and the purpose of the sprint review can be achieved. Let's start with a bit of preparation. As a reminder, anyone that the team agrees on, on or off the team, can facilitate the scrum events, including the sprint review. As part of the preparation for the sprint review, the product owner can help to ensure the right stakeholders are invited. This can include real customers who in some way are involved in the product development process. Sometimes it may be hard to decide who the right people are and the people invited can vary over time depending on what the product or sprint goal is. One idea which can help is to give stakeholders an indication of the work that will be inspected beforehand so they can decide if their participation would be valuable. Another important tip is to make people aware beforehand that the event is a working session. This helps frame the interaction and let people know that the sprint review is definitely not limited to a demo and or presentation. As part of preparation for the event, Scrum team members create multiple product feature stations before the start of the sprint review. In a physical room, a product feature station consists of, for example, a flip chart, markers, a table with a product feature and feedback cards. In a virtual environment, these stations can be different breakout rooms with an online collaboration space. Now all is prepared and the time has come to start the sprint review. Welcome everyone to the event. Remind people of the sprint goal and product goal. It is important everyone has a shared understanding of these goals so they can inspect the increment delivered in the sprint and the progress toward the product goal. Additionally, it may be relevant to discuss what is happening in the market, any changing customer behaviors, metrics such as customer usage index of your current product, and what potential impact this would have on future work. Next, invite stakeholders to visit and rotate through the various stations in smaller groups. At each station, there should be a representative of the Scrum team where stakeholders have the opportunity to try out a different feature at each station. This interaction with the product features is important. It allows stakeholders to really experience the product. Scrum team members should be collecting feedback at the same time. However, be aware that feature stations do not turn into the Scrum team offering selling points. The person facilitating should also be careful to avoid the stakeholders becoming anchored in certain opinions so that the Scrum team can get diverse feedback. No matter the facilitation technique used, keep in mind that the purpose of the sprint review should be inspecting the done work of the sprint, collecting feedback, and determining future adaptations. When all the stakeholders have visited all the stations and have had the opportunity to inspect, interact, and give feedback on the product features that were delivered in the sprint, bring the flip charts with the gathered feedback in the middle of the room for all to see, or into one main room if virtual. People are given time to read the various feedback and group them into themes where relevant. A couple of helpful facilitation techniques can be used here, such as gallery walk and affinity mapping. Based on the feedback, the product goal, market conditions, and customer behaviors, discuss together what the next most valuable thing is to work on and adapt the product backlog accordingly. At the end, be sure to thank everyone for their participation and feedback. The sprint review format we just described in this short video 
helps to avoid the trap of having long demos or presentations, which often result in people getting bored and disengaged, which results in more often than not, the real purpose of the sprint review getting lost. Hopefully this video has been helpful and thank you for watching. We know that not one size fits all and there may be better ways to run an effective sprint review that may be more engaging within your context. We also know that there are many different ways a sprint review cannot go as planned. If you're eager to check out more sprint review formats and other facilitation topics, visit the scrum.org website or join a professional scrum facilitation skill class.